for hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Friday, it's a new DAX function every Friday. In today's DAX Fridays, we're going to talk about one of the most important things that you have to have correctly to do good DAX, and it's modeling. So we're going to go through the basics of data modeling. First of all, what is a data model? Data model. A data model is basically what you see on the image. It's a collection of tables and they are related through relationships, okay? It, it, the concept is actually very easy. If you've been doing any access at all, you already know this. So if you come from the Excel world, you will probably work with flat tables unless you're using Power Pivot and, you know, Power Query. So the flat table, for those of you that do not know, it is basically one table that contains all the information. This is a very common way to work in Excel before Power Pivot existed, right? So you put everything in together and then you work with that. Where are the disadvantages of doing this? I do have a video, I'm going to link it down below, but basically it is poor performance. So because the table is so big, every time the engine has to scan it, it takes forever. And this is also poor usability. And with usability, I mean, because the table is so big, it takes such a long time to understand what is in there, what type of information can I find? There's thousands of columns and there is a search box. So if you created the model, you probably know the columns, but think about your users that have not seen the model before. So this is a very tough way to work. So if you're doing something in Power BI, try to avoid the flat tables because it will give you poor performance. If your table is not very big and it's only you that are going to use it, go ahead. But remember, your Power BI file is going to get wings on fly. So do it right from the beginning. Okay, so <coughs> there are actually two ways to create data models in Power BI. The first way, which I think is actually quite common, it is you import it. So more often than not, your data team or the source that you're getting the data from has already a data model created. So the only thing that you need to do is to actually import it. And if you have the following settings ticked on Power BI, this is on file options, then Power BI will create the model for you. Even if the model has not been created in the background, Power BI will still try to find the relationships between the tables that you load. If you have one table only, out of luck, but you, otherwise you will try to find, okay, is there any relationships and create a model for you, which it does it fairly well, actually. Number two, you need to create the model yourself. It means you have a flat table and or you have different sources and you have to create a model yourself. Again, if you have different sources, part of the way I will try it, but sometimes it won't work. I have an example of how to create a very simple one, actually, of how to create a model yourself with the COVID data. I'm going to post a link down below to that data set so you can practice on this, okay? But Creating a model yourself, more often than not, it means that you need to normalize your data. Probably you have heard this, but you don't know what it is. So the, the, the actual concept of normalizing data is to separate it in chunks where it makes sense. So if you see columns that are repeating the information a lot, probably means that you should separate them into different tables. Example. The only way to, to explain this is actually with an example. So we're going to actually, this is a snapshot of the um, coronavirus data set. And then again, you're going to see it on the video, but let me show you here very, very quickly. If you look at this data set, you will see that we have province, column, and then latitude and longitude. So for every, and here we have the confirmed cases. These you will see that we need to unpivot. So it will have one column per day. So you need to put columns into rows. I have a video on that too. Columns into rows. And then you end up with a date column and confirmed and then death cases. Okay. So this is the, the table that you will get. On this side, you will see that information is repeating all the time because you will get one date per country per region. 
Okay, so, and then obviously the latitude and longitude is repeating, so it just feels like you should separate these two. But how do you separate them? You need to find a common denominator so then you can join the two tables together. So in this case, you could actually either join latitude and longitude, or you can join province and country region. Power BI compress better numbers than uh, text. But to make it more intuitive, I actually joined the province and state. Now, if you can see here, there are tons of nulls, and you have to be careful with that. You cannot just get country um, and not have this as location ID. You're not, you have to have the lowest level on the hierarchy, which is, in this case, you need to concatenate these two and create a location ID column, a new one. And then, once you have that, you will end up with two tables. You will have a location table that will have location ID, the new one that you created. Then you will have region, you will have country, and then you will have latitude and longitude. And then you will have here location ID again, because this is the key of our relationship. So we'll talk about relationships in a second. And then you will have data, date, those, those, right? And then confirm and deaths. So to join these tables together, you put this one and this one together because they are the same. Now, when you drag and drop in Power BI, Power BI will know, will examine the columns and say, okay, in this case, that you're going to get an arrow here and this is a one to many. It means for one location in here, we will have many dates, which is true, right? So easy. Now, I didn't know this when I started working with Power BI, it was Excel back then, but in data modeling, they call the different things facts and dimensions. So you have fact tables and dimension tables. If we back down a little bit, just for a second, and we look, this is the North Wind data set, you know, the, the one that we always use. And you, uh, let me go in here. So we have two types of tables. We have fact tables and we have, let me pick another color, blue dimensions. So what is a fact table? A fact table is basically a table that changes very, very quickly. So it changes a lot. Okay. And if you look into this transactional data set, you will see that order and order details, this is where all the orders stay. If you have hopefully a lot of customers that order a lot of stuff, you're going to get new rows in here all the time. So this qualifies actually as a fact table. And this is also a fact table. Okay, and then the dimension tables are like, it gives context to your fact table. So it gives you more information, more info, and they don't change a lot, a lot. So it's slow changing. So for example, here, if you look at customers, you probably have a customer base and then maybe you get one or two customers a month or maybe a year, right? So this is going to be slow change and it's a dimension. And this is the same with products. It's all going to change very, very seldom. It depends on the reasons that you have, obviously, but normally you don't develop that many products all the time. And this is a way for modelers to understand how they should separate the table. So if we go back to our case in here where we're normalizing the data, you see that in these, this part, this is, we're going to get new dates every day with new confirm and new cases. So this is our fact table. Now, there is going to be a lot of changes on the location table, but at some point when we have covered all the countries, this is not going to change anymore. So this is our dimension table. Okay. I didn't know about this when I started modeling. You probably don't need to know about it in the beginning either, but good to have in mind anyway. So let's talk about these relationships. Relationships, there are actually three types in Power BI. You have one to many, and this is the one that you saw here, one location, many dates. You have one to one, and this is 
more often than not when you start creating the debate, so date set, that you don't have a lot of information. For example, imagine on the COVID corona data set where in the beginning we just had China. So it was China, no, that would be one too many. But in the beginning you will not have a lot of one too many, but as, as you know, the data set matures, you will probably one to ones will convert to one to many. And then you have many to many. Many to many is a tricky one. Now, we have relationships and then we have a direction of the relationships. And there is a single, and then you have both. I think it's called in Power BI, right? And here's the thing. This one and this one try to avoid. These avoid altogether. These, there are some times that you need it, okay? But they're basically the same, but not really. So here's the thing. Um, I have a few videos on many to many and why you should avoid them and also what can you do to avoid them. One of the things that you can do is use DAX and, DAX and use cross filter. And then another one that you can do is to use a breached table is uh, what it is called on the data modeling world. I have a video on that. So, well, I'll link it up below, don't worry. So, avoid many to many. I got a, co a comment this week about, oh, I, you know, I'm working on Excel and in Excel we don't have many to many, how do I do? So I'd be happy that you don't have many to many because you shouldn't use them. It will get you in all kinds of trouble. So if we shouldn't use this one, and this one we should use with caution, when do we put this one? This is actually something that Power BI is going to do by itself. So once you've created your model, you have you know, you normalized your data, you separated your tables, or you imported different tables, Power BI will try to find the relationships between them. Most of the time they will try to do it you know, automatically. But uh, once you have the tables, Power BI will do this for you. One of the things that you have to be careful with is that when you have a small data set and there is a one-to-one -one relationship, you will create a one-to-one -one relationship, but with time, one of the ones will become a many, and then Power BI will give you an error because it will say, hey, this is a one-to-one -one and you have one-to-many. So you have to change. If you know that a one-to-one -one is going to be one-to-many, change it right away, okay? Mm -hmm.